What's up guys, Coach Az, and today I wanna to talk to you a little bit about range. Understanding it, managing it, and importantly, what we're really gonna to discuss today is identifying which techniques work at different distances to your opponents, so you know exactly which tool to use when the appropriate time presents itself. Now obviously I'm talking about striking disciplines today, so depending on your discipline, you're gonna have a different toolbox of techniques that you have access to. For example, in boxing, you're obviously just limited to the fundamental punches. However, in Muay Thai, you then have the addition of kicks, knees, and elbows. So although this might sound really obvious, the first thing to do is identify all of your different weapons and all of the different heights and ranges that you can throw them from. A great way to experiment with this is to train with an invisible line. And by that I mean, let's say I'm using the punch bag, I'm gonna set myself a line that I can't cross. And from there, I'm gonna see which techniques are available to me at that distance. What can I throw effectively with speed, with power that would reach my target being that far away from it? Generally speaking, you're gonna have around three ranges. The long range, the mid range, and the short range. The long range being the techniques that you can throw from the furthest distance. So how far away can you stand and still land on your opponent? Especially if you've got access to kicks, this is probably going to be a technique such as a front kick or a lead leg roundhouse that can reach your opponent from the maximum range. If you're simply boxing, this is going to be your jab, your lead arm straight punches to the target. And this is where the distinction becomes really important because if I was a kickboxer and I go into my mid range, I'm now at my jabbing distance. Some of those techniques such as my front kick won't work at this exact range. I'd be too close to the target to hit it. So my straight punches become my mid range techniques. When we get closer to the bag, we're talking about close range and by that I mean hook punches and uppercuts. However, if you were Muay Thai, you've also now got access to your elbows and your knee strikes. Kicking at close range is something that's very limited. Unless you've got extreme flexibility or you've got the ability to attack the legs, majority of the time when we're in close range, we're talking about upper body attacks or the inclusion of the knees. The reason why you want to have this catalog of techniques and ranges programmed into your brain is because a fight is never static. You're always constantly changing the distance between you and your opponent. So your weapons and what you have access to is always changing as well. Importantly, if you can start predicting how the range is going to change, you can create far better setups for your techniques. The mistake many fighters make is they try to hit their opponent with where they are standing at the moment. The problem with that, of course, is most opponents are going to react, and that means they're either going to move backwards, to the side, slip their head off, or get their guard up to block. So you can end up in a situation where you're throwing a ton of technique, but you're not actually landing anything on your opponent. This is where setups, distance management, and timing become essential skills to actually land the technique. Let's say I'm trying to land a back leg roundhouse kick to the head of my opponent. Now, if I simply just throw the kick, I'm giving my opponent plenty of opportunity to read what I'm doing and to react accordingly. They might move backwards, they might cut off an angle, they might get their guard up to block it. What I'm relying on there is being just simply faster than they are or more switched on that my technique's going to land. I'm gonna have a low percentage of success. Okay, so what's the next stage? Well, the next stage would be to set it up behind something. Often the best way to land a head kick is to put it behind some punches. So let's say that we put it behind a jab cross. This is where the importance of the different ranges come in because like I said, this kick will probably be a long range technique. However, your jab cross is more of a mid range. So if you try to throw them all at one distance, you are either going to have to compromise the punches by overreaching or compromise the kick by compressing the technique to fit in with that range. So in this instance, even if your opponent doesn't move and you do hit them with the head kick, the head kick is being thrown with compromise because you've had to adjust the technique to make up for the fact that you were not at the correct range. The final stage of this, what you really want to develop up to is the ability to predict your opponent's movements through your setups. So take for example, you throw that jab cross on its own, not with the intention of landing with, but with the intention of using it to create a read. By a read, I mean, when I throw that jab cross, how does my opponent react to it? In this instance, my opponent is always reacting the same way by moving backwards. They're creating space to avoid being hit with the punches. 
Now, if I can create that situation again and again, so I repeat throwing punching combinations and the same response comes back off my opponent, I can then predict where they're going to be and use a long range technique to land the shot that I wanna hit them with. So this is where I throw the one, two as a setup, predicting my opponent is going to move back and then hit them with that back leg roundhouse kick as they fall into the correct range. Now, as you can see in all these demos, I'm doing this on a freestanding bag, which obviously doesn't have the ability to move. If you've got a hanging bag that swings a little bit, you can replicate this a little better. But what I'm having to do is start at a distance and then have the bag in the position that I would like my opponent to finish in. Again, it's a game of chess, not a game of checkers. I'm trying to think a few moves ahead of my opponent and not simply just one move at a time. If you think one move at a time, more than likely they're going to block it, they're going to move out of the way, or they're going to counter you. However, if we're always thinking ahead, this is how we can take advantage of our opponent's habits, necessities, and the things that they do over and over again in the fight. Often, you'll hear fighters being described as being really, really fast. But more often than not, it's not that they're really, really fast, it's that they've got this ability to predict future events within the fight and put the technique where it needs to be. Remember, you're not trying to hit them where they stand, you're trying to hit them where they're going to stand. So guys, I hope this video has been useful. Practice all your different ranges and practice combinations that move between two or three. Go from long range to a mid range, from mid range to a close range. Work all your different ranges so that you can be effective in the fight regardless of where it goes. And I will see you on the next one.